Good morning. Um, I thought today we'd talk a little bit about cheddar. Um, it immediately, for me anyway, it immediately adds a bit of uh, antiqueness and uh, just something that looks old about a quilt when you use quite a bit of cheddar in it that I love right away. So um, you may know it as chrome orange or cheddar. When I'm looking through my stash, I think of cheddar, cheddar cheese. This is the type of uh, color that I'm looking for. So I don't really know where that cheddar word came from, but I think for me, it's a good descriptive word that brings up the color immediately in my head. I just went through my stash pretty quickly this morning, found three different, you're gonna find so many varieties of cheddar. So you just have to find what's gonna work for your project, whatever you wanna use. And it works great in a modern day project as well, or a fall project, um, so many uses. And I think just using cheddar is really hard to date quilts because cheddar has been around for a long time and has been used for a long time. Even maybe not so much in the 30s, but even in the 30s, um, you'll find some that have quite a bit of cheddar in it. So anyway, so here's just three. There actually are different colors here, three different solid cheddars which are great. I chose a few prints out of my stash and they range from cheddar to light, just a variety that you can use and still <laughs> call it cheddar. Let's see if I can't do that here. Um, and it just makes, makes a lot of fun uh, quilts. So, and right now with fall coming, people are already starting to make fall colored quilts. Cheddar is a great color to use in that, uh, in your quilt making. And if you haven't, if you're afraid of using it, but you like old quilts, why don't you try it just a small, make a small quilt with some cheddar and see how you like it. So that's what I suggest. That's why I love small quilts is because it's fun to try something new that you haven't tried in the past. So I'm gonna show you a few quilts that I have that have cheddar in them. The first one is an antique and it is beautiful. Unfortunately, the center of it was completely um, just losing everything. So I have two halves and I suppose I could try and put them back together, but I'm not. I'm just enjoying them the way they are. I'm gonna move in close. Here's a print, cheddar print, and then a cheddar solid. So this quilt maker chose to use, you know, maybe probably what they had. Um, I do wanna say though, really, look at that quilting. That is amazing. It's beautiful. So it's worthy of being cut in half because it really is beautiful. And I love the cheddar with a little pop of red. Um, how she came up with deciding to put red right in there, I don't know, but it's, it's a great little quilt. Actually, it wasn't little to start with. Um, one of my more recent ones is Stars in a Time Warp that I used cheddar as the alternating square and the setting triangles and in the border. And um, it does actually have a bit of a modern quilt pattern. And if you've read my blog for very long, you know I ran into some quilting difficulties with this quilt. And uh, so this is how it turned out. And I like it. It wasn't as I envisioned it. But um, sometimes you've got to just change. You've got to change, you know, your tune sometimes when you get going. So Stars in a Time Warp that Barbara Brackman did. Every week she talked about a different style of fabric and we made a block with different fabrics from different time periods. And that was a great learning experience. All right, if you guys have been following my blog for long, you'll see Cheddar Cheese and Crackers. That is a quilt, my very first quilt along. I saw an antique in a large size quilt up in Sisters and decided to try and replicate it using a small, doing a small version. 
And like I said, small versions are great uh, to do, just to try things, new things on. This one was also published in Primitive Quilts and mm, Primitive Quilt Magazine. I can't remember the other name of it. Anyway, so that's a, that's a, to me, it looks old. And I did put quite a bit of quilting in this one, more than usual. You can see that. I think I actually went back and added quilting after it was done because I just felt it needed some more. Here is another quilt along. This one is called Country Lanes. And I'm gonna move in. You can see it's actually a cheddar print. But I still think that overall the cheddar makes a really nice old looking quilt. Or it can be a very bold statement like this one, which this one, um, I actually copied one block of a quilt that I saw at the Aurora Quilt Colony made by Mennonites. And so this actually was a quilt block made, well, the whole quilt was made back in like the 1850s. I opted to make one block and a friend uh, hand dyed the fabric. And so like I said, it definitely makes a statement. I quilted it in black thread. And so that's kind of fun. That's kind of bold because my uh, quilting isn't that good. So anyway, another great use for cheddar. You can make a really bold statement. And then this one was actually, we saw a bow tie quilt at Sisters in the antique quilt um, section. And um, Bonnie Hunter was here for the summer or for the, that quilt show. And she made a couple of blocks and this, this was her very first um, like year long sew along that she does. She finds a block to make, to use as a leader ender. And um, that turned out to be such a successful um, project for her to do. And I know lots of you follow her. Um, I opted to make mine small because I just was, I didn't love making like that many bow ties. But anyway, and I did use solids. And so a lot of what I do, this one is actually machine quilted, which you can see from the back. A lot of times I'll machine quilt and hand quilt on the small quilts. And I have one more, or no, I have two more, which have fallen. All right, here's one I did for a swap. And I actually didn't end up swapping it because I hand quilted that as I was visiting my dad when he was not doing well. And, um, and so I just, it had a little bit more sentimental feelings to me, so I just couldn't swap it. But I call it off the beaten path because when we were little, my dad would never go, usually not to a regular campground. He would just pull off on some road and go and we would just camp. Um, and so how they did that and how they enjoyed themselves with four little kids, is beyond me, um, but I do believe uh, my dad has given me a lot of love for the outdoors. So anyway, I call this off the beaten path, and this is kind of in memory of my dad. He loved cheese too. And then, I this is a new quilt, and I purchased this, I believe, um, it might have been last year at the Sisters show, and I had, I saw that they were coming. This was made from a woman in Africa who was just taught to applique and embroider. And they tell the story of their lives. And so this is, um, it says, supporting obstet obstetric fistula survivors in Kenya. And I have a little paper that says who made it in their life story. But I personally think the cheddar is what drew me in to this one. And I think that's why I loved it so much. And um, so it's a great little quilt. And anyway, so there are some samples of some of the um, different quilts that you can do with cheddar. I would love to know if you have uh, made a quilt with predominantly cheddar. 
and um, share it on the Facebook group if you have. And if not, let me know if I've inspired you. All right. Take care. Have a great day.